Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, it's been three months since, uh, well, since all this craziness began basically and the last time I was out on the rocks. It's the end of May and things are getting better. Restrictions are easing a bit. We're able to travel a little further. Um, although staying responsible of course. And uh, so I'm taking the opportunity to, uh, to come to one of my not so productive marks places like this and just coming out and about and getting some more fresh air and hearing the birds sing and you know that type of thing that makes all this worthwhile but it's it's definitely within the boundaries of the rules and St Abs is up the way a few more miles but that's outside of the boundaries by uh, by the rule book. I've got two rods with me I've got my LRF rod and uh, and my normal uh, rock fishing and bass fishing rod the weather is lovely it's a little colder than it has been it's about 12 degrees and there's a fog rolling in off the sea behind us don't know if you can see that and uh, there's a little bit of a swell but the swell's due to die down through the day so and the tide's dropping so hopefully that should uh, should make the mark pretty safe the idea today is just to just to go out and enjoy myself Hopefully uh, bring you guys along and you can enjoy yourselves by proxy or however, you know, it's, it's been a really difficult time for everyone. It still is a really difficult time for everyone. We've got to take the opportunity to have these little, uh, little enjoyments in life, I guess. I'm down on the mark now and uh, the place has come alive since I was last here at the beginning of March. Uh, as you can see, the birds are nesting on the uh, the cliffs, the uh, razor bills and guillemots have all arrived and flying around like lunatics. One thing that did kind of take us by surprise is the uh, the lack of green grass. Uh, I know that sounds a bit weird, I guess, but the uh, the brown grass on the descent is really, really, really slippy. It's uh, not usual for for this area, but then it has been such a dry. A uh, month or two months, I think. So uh, anyone coming out around here, make sure you take your time because uh, the descents have just got harder than they usually are. But I hope you can hear us over the din of the uh, the waves and the gulls. But um, I've decided to go with the uh, LRF setup first of all. Um, see if there's any coolies or, or small pollock or, or even big pollock about. Um, the setup is a Savage Gear light range fishing rod, which is eight and a half foot. Uh, it's quite long for an LRF rod, but it means I can cast further and actually control fish around the edges here. Um, there's a lot of undercuts and the extra length makes it easier to keep the fish out, um, out of the structure. Uh, I've got a £10, as in £10 cost, Shimano Hyperloop 1000 size reel. Uh, that's loaded with uh, Berkeley Nano Fill 6 pound braid which is just like thread basically, it's so thin. Um, on that I've got a leader of about uh, four foot, uh, which is tied with an FG knot and the leader's 10 pounds. That just gives us a little bit of extra abrasion resistance um, when I'm fishing in amongst the structure. And I'm starting off with a little uh, two gram um, jig head with a curly tail, pink curly tail grub on it. Uh, let's see how this gets on.
That was literally my first cast. Yes, get in. Little fish on the LRF rod. Here we go. Oh, a nice little pollock. Pull fish. Nice swam away. This rod's actually uh, weighted to um, between two and ten grams. So this is right at the uh, lower limit of its casting ability. As you can see, you can't really get that far with it. It's got a solid tip, which is a white bit on the end. It's really, really sensitive, so it should be all right fishing with this kind of weight. Oh, Ooh. oh! I don't know if you saw that on the rod tip, but I would, uh, was just cleaning some row off my line. You can see the eggs in here. Probably pollock or something. But uh, I wasn't concentrating, and just as my lure was near the surface, I got a little tug. Unfortunately, I missed it. Try the other direction. There we go. Woo. Yay! I've got the drag lock pretty tight here, just just in case I hook up to something bigger. But there's, there's so much structure, and these barnacles are a nightmare with such light line. This fish is trying to get in there straight away. See it figure out how to land it. Oh, there we go. Nice little coolie. This is why I have that 10 pound line on. Oh, just so I can lift lift the fish out. Oh, the hook drops straight out. Well, there we go. Second fish. Lovely colours on these. The blue's on the top, and this one's got a bit of orange in it as well. Bit of a kelp dweller. He's away. Get in. It's the second fish now. Gosh. I can stand here catching these all day for the hours.
Oh, oh, they're hitting it. Hey, there we go. Woo! Feels like slightly better on this one. Oh, he's got himself hung up. A little git. He's going to give it some slack. So cool, he's out. I had a feeling it might be a pollock because they tend to head for the structure and the cover. But yeah, it's just another nice little chunky coley. the lures out Oop. there's another little one for us it's got a bit of a something's had a go out of it on the side and its fins are a bit knackered bit of a bruiser again it's got these purple dots on which are quite unusual excellent so I've had a few fish, I think that's three now. Um, fantastic fun on this light tackle as well. The tide's dropping a bit now, so probably just gonna um, move down to this ledge or the ledge over there and uh, get myself in a bit more of a, a bit more of an appropriate area to cast from uh, and to film from at the same time. This little piece of rock over there is my, uh, my keystone as it were and uh, yeah, well, I've been watching the tide and the swells because obviously I don't want to get on there and have the swell hit me. So uh, it looks like it might be all right at the moment. Give it another 20 minutes and then see uh, see get on it. Maybe use some heavier gear and find a bigger fish or two. But at the minute, I'm really enjoying this uh, this coolie bashing. All right. This is the problem with the long rod there. It's uh, hard to cast in, in tight spaces. Try a slightly quicker retrieve. Could just normally take a moving bait, or a faster moving bait at least. But these fish are them catching seem to be waiting until the lure's right, either at the edge of the cliff or uh, near the surface. Which kind of makes sense. There's uh, nowhere for the uh, the apparent bait fish to go once they've got it cornered stick a little uh, the odd paws in there as well just to add to the excitement for them Oop. I was just thinking the coolies have moved off Well, they are dark around here. Almost thought that was a pollock in the water. But the lateral line's straight, so uh, it's definitely a coolie. Oh. 
just popped off. So I've been fishing for about an hour and a half. <clears throat> I think didn't really clock when we started, but uh, I've used one GoPro battery, so that's probably about an hour or so. Uh, I've caught four, four coolies. Quite, quite good fun. Uh, not quite good fun. It's been really good fun. Uh, this, this cave's kind of emptying out a bit, so I'm thinking just move around a bit uh, onto this rock over here and then uh, hopefully we might get something bigger the wind's dying down so there was much in the swells uh, a bit more manageable um, so and, and the good thing about this particular mark is as the tide retreats there's more and more areas to fish as we as we move around the coast so uh gonna have a quick apple or a bite of wheat now and then we'll let's get over onto this rock bite of wheat and what i'm gonna do is um I'm going to rig my uh, bigger rod up and because I've had so much luck on uh, on the kayak with um, with these 20 gram offshore uh, fish eels I'm going to rig that um, that rod up with this and then I'm going to take this little lightweight rod down there as well this is brand new I've just got a new packet because I keep losing them on the kayak but <clears throat> they're fantastic although pretty expensive lures um, but one big hint, or the best thing I've found to uh, to prolong the life for these lures is to use a bit of super glue. So uh, I'm just bring a little bit of uh, gel super glue down, which I'm just going to uh, dab a bit in here. And that will seriously prolong the life i mean all it takes is one fish when they're not glued to pull this and you get a massive rip in here and that's you know it's a, a four pound uh body of a lure gone so i'm not making the neatest job of this but that's that glued in now I'll leave that to dry and then uh, that'll make allow me to catch fish after fish after fish for those who haven't seen any of my videos before, this is a Slash Lamia Fief. Uh, it's an eight and a half foot rod. Um, it's a lightweight bass rod actually. Um, casts from four to 28 grams. Uh, I use it for all of my general fishing. That isn't so light that I can't use it for under four grams. <clears throat> I've got a uh, Daiwa uh, BG Mag sealed, um, two and a half thousand size reel on there loaded with 12 pound Tazlan elite braid really really thin diameter it's great but it means i have to tie an fg knot um which can be a bit of a pain out in the rocks if you keep getting snagged tied on by an fg knot is uh some um 20 pound sorry 22 and a half pound seagar ace hard fluorocarbon which uh, is nice and uh, stiff actually not too supple but great abrasion resistance um then I've just got a lure clip and as I said earlier I'm going to give these little bad boys a go hopefully I don't get snagged straight away but uh, let's see if there's something bigger lurking feels really strange holding something so heavy now this actually feels a little uh, heavy for my rod, I know the um, jig head's 20 grams and they don't include the weight of the uh, of the body and that it feels like my rod's bottoming out when I'm casting so I'm just going to uh, take it easy and ping it out gently Oh, fish on Oh, it's off Look, there's a fella in a little boat just come out of the mist there.
see. Hopefully you can see on there with teeth marks. Just missed a hoop. Straight away, took that on the drop. Oh, I felt it just hit straight away. It's definitely not a coolie. Could be a cod, because it's not really putting up much of a scrap, to be honest. Yep. It's a cod. Here we go, third cast with a crazy eel, nice coddling, look at the colour of that lateral line, really really white, hook just in the top lip there, that's exactly why, don't get tangled, it's exactly why I super glue those heads on, nice. So that's a really good sign that the cod's taken on the drop. I think they're pretty lazy fish personally and uh, that one was obviously pretty active because I had a bit of slack in my line as the lure was sinking and uh, I just felt the tap and then yeah straight into it. You can see the mess they make of these lures and that's exactly why I super glue them on. This will probably do with maybe two or three more fish. Not quite as far as the last cast, so hopefully there's, uh, they're moving around a little bit. Oh, I don't need us love fishing. Sorry, it sound cheesy, but just missed it too much. Feels like another cod. Yeah, hit it on the drop. Might be a bit bigger this one. Come on up. Need to get it up so it doesn't get in this seaweed underneath us. Oh yeah. No, oh, no, it's a pollock. Just didn't fight. Didn't fight like a pollock. Oh, well, matey, where's your fight? Oh. 
hitting them now. <laughs> so that's bullfish, pollock and cod. Maybe about two and a half, three pounds, three pound maybe. Something's had a go in it, looks like it's been a cormorant. Let's get it back. There it goes. Again, that's another fish on the drop, so uh, as long as I can find them, then, then they seem to be biting. Get in. So with that cast, I cast over the rock over there, um, and my la lure landed on the rock and then managed to pull it off, I don't know, it was maybe five metres down, and then it, the uh, pollock must have been sitting under the rock, but I hit it just as the uh, lure was sinking down deeper. I'm going to give this a few more casts because it's obviously catching me fish, but do have something that's similar, a similar sort of jig, um, but it's a paddle tail. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a paddle tail and uh, it'll have a slower sink rate. Now if a fish keep hitting it on the drop then the slower sink rate might entice them, you know, the, the lure is going to be presented in front of them for a little bit longer and that might just make the difference, you know, between catching a couple of fish and maybe catching four or five or six. Um, either way though, it's still catching fish. A lot of them cast them back to the same spot, because a lot of the time if there's a one pollock. Three or four, the battery on my GoPro has just died. Right, I'm going to get a bite to eat and put that, um, put that other lure on. I'll show you when I get back to my bag what it is. almost easy on a day like this to forget that there's a killer virus ravaging the world at the moment the smell in the air is amazing the salt oh it's so fresh right so i've just had a bite to eat and uh the mist has completely cleared now and it is roasting um put my sun top on just because uh my neck is just feeling it so uh this is that lure I was talking about with the Zorus uh, rolling head on. Although the, uh, the head's the same weight as the fish, uh, this paddle tail will give it a lot slower um, sink rate. So hopefully it might become a little bit more enticing. Like I said earlier, if, uh, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work and I can put the other lure back on. But if it does, it might be the difference of catching one or two fish or, and uh, actually catching five, six, seven, eight fish. Um, normally save these for bass. I've not really used them around in this type of ground, but uh, and for this type of fishing. Um, although I do have a big, uh, they do an eight inch version, which I use on the kayak for cod in the, uh, in the summer and they love it. Um, so I uh, will tie this on and see how we get on. Had a little rattle there. Get this up. Codlin. Woo. Oh, what's going to be the best way of getting this out? 
Think over on this side. Right, well, there we go. Second codling of the day. Proper local, this one, you can tell by the colour. They're uh, really dark and red like this when they live in the kelp and tend not to head offshore. Um, again, a really strong white lateral line. Just helps them uh, hunt in the thick cover. It's a fat little thing, probably weighs about two and a half pounds. So sharp teeth as well. Get in. Felt a couple of taps on my previous cast and cast back in the same place and exactly the same with that first cod uh, when I, that I had on the, um, the fish minnow but uh, yeah great I was almost thinking that that lure was probably too big for this time of year but it just goes to show I guess here's another look at that lure again it's, uh, they wear a bit better than the uh, the fish minnow lures do and uh, because of this rolling head it, it's got a sort of rolling movement like that and then the big paddle tail just thumps water so it makes loads of noise we don't really need it in this kind of clear water but it's obviously not had uh, had any effect on that fish ne any negative effect on that fish anyway There's another one, took on the drop, Whoop. felt light but now it uh, feels a bit heavier. Oh yeah, it's another card I think. It's not going for crazy runs, just weighs a lot. Whoop. And taking a bit of drag there, go on get up, throw it in the kelp. Oh. Ah, oh, I couldn't get it up quick enough. <laughs> Don't see anything. Let it slack off a bit and then maybe I might go let it slacken off a bit. There it is. Yeah, it's a card. No, oh, Pollock. Pollock well, haven't been very fighty today. This way. Look at this Pollock. Fat 
one. It's not massive, but it's fat. So here we go, there's our puppy. Can see the camera. Here we go, there's the pollock. It's probably about four pounds this, so give it. It's fat and deep. It's uh, strange, they're just not scrapping like they, uh, like they usually do. Maybe the water's still a little cold, but uh, the ones I caught in the kayak last week were, were cracking. So, uh, no, I'm really happy with that as well. Get it back. Oh. On the last cast of that fish, I was just seeing how tough these are, these lures. Fortunately, that's that one ruined. Um, didn't bring any more with me, so uh, I was actually thinking of calling it a day because I've been here a good six six hours and I've run out of water. I think what I'm going to do is uh, take this off and uh, whack this back on. See so if I can get a, another couple of fish before I have to go. It's been a cracking day. Oh, fish on. Head shakes, feels like a coddling again. That hit on the pause that time. What do you get? Alright. Oh no, Pollock, little one. I'm going to try and lift it, but it's actually uh, pretty fat. I know I just said I was about to leave but uh, here's another another fish seems like the fishing is just turning on now we'll get this back and have a few more casts I was just thinking about this actually and I barely used the lift and draw technique today I've just literally done uh, straight retrieves once I've hit the once my lures hit the bottom then just slowly winding with some um, pauses in and well four fish three fish have hit on the drop and that one hit on the pause sorry two fish hit on the drop that coddling in the, over there took it as a straight retrieve and that fish there hit on the pause a bit of a mixture really but as i said at the beginning of the day i guess that means that the fish are pretty active today if uh, they don't need too much either agitating or you know, to, to strike, they're just, they're out having a feed, which is good news for me. Right, unfortunately this is going to have to be the last cast. It's 20 to 4. Been here a good 6, 7 hours. Didn't actually notice what time I arrived, but it's been a long time. Feels like my gums are shrinking with the lack of water. Gonna fish this out and then head back. It's been an awesome day. Don't use that word very often, but it has been an awesome day. What a way to kick off the uh, the summer season. 
hopefully uh, we can get a lot more of this on the go in the next coming next few months um, really hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, please share it out amongst your mates on uh, all the different social media platforms a real big help to me give us a thumbs up as well if you haven't already and don't forget to subs hit the subscribe button thought I had a fish there last cast fish <laughs> Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification if you've liked the video or want to see more of my videos, go and check out my channel. I thought I'd lost that lure then. But yeah, until the next video. Tight lines, guys.